This is Gabby Petito. Most of you have probably seen at least something about this young woman recently. She was 22 and ready for adventure, so she decided to start a YouTube channel to document her journey throughout America. Her first video was titled, Beginning Our Van Life Journey, released on August 19th. Fast forward not even a month, and she was reported missing. The story is just truly sad, and because of this, her name has become a trending topic, and not just in America, but all around the world. The police body cam footage of her shortly before her disappearance gained 14 million views in a week. People are curious, people are mad, and people want answers. So in this video, we'll be going over the heartbreaking story of Gabby Petito and her short-lived dream of van life and exploring America with her fiance, hopes and dreams. Gabby Petito was from Long Island, New York. Sounds like she grew up in the city and was ready to see new things and to explore the world. Before this road trip that went so horrifically wrong, she worked at a pharmacy technician job to start putting money away for this huge trip that she planned to take with Brian Laundry in their camper van. From my research, it is hard to say if the van was hers or Brian's. They weren't married, so it's hard to say who actually owned it. Brian Laundry was from Florida, and I know what you are thinking. Isn't that like, really far away from New York. Apparently, this couple found each other in high school where they remained friends. According to Friends of Gabby, Brian and Gabby have been in a relationship for about four years and recently just announced that they were engaged. What a great way to start this journey across America. It's probably what everyone thought, but nobody really knew what was to come. So let's talk about Brian Laundrie. A little more before we get too far into the story. Brian Laundrie was reported to be seen working on this van frequently, according to his neighbor. The neighbor never really knew what they were doing with the van, but she just knew that they were working on it. From what I can see, Gabby and Brian were living in this house at Northport before their great adventure. If you look at the van, Gabby clearly had some input on its design, and it did look really great as far as van living goes. It was a small van, but it was all supposed to be their humble start in the van life scene. Brian Laundrie is a bit more of a mystery, but from the research that I have done, he was the breadwinner in this relationship. According to the internet, he was involved in some family business, making his net worth close to $200,000. But like I said, that is all information I found on Google, so take it with a grain of salt. From what I can see, these are just normal people wanting to adventure and to explore the world, but little did they know that they would become such a big topic, but not for the reason they would have thought. Anyways, let's start at the very beginning, early July of 2021. They started their journey across America. One of their first stops was at the Monument Rocks in Kansas on the way west. Here are some of the pictures that they took there, and they have documented this entire process on Instagram. So every place they stopped, there are posts, and even leading up to her very last Instagram post. Here are some of the pictures they took. The part that I have the hardest time with is the fact that they just look so happy. I think it is fair to say that they were living the dream, but little did we know that there were problems behind the scenes. Anyways, from what social media would tell us, they were living the life for a whole month until this. August 12th, they were caught having an argument at a local coffee shop near Moab City, Utah, where they were later pulled over for suspected drunk driving. Later to find out that the couple was just in an argument, and according to them both, the reason for the wild driving was because Gabby distracted Brian. Here's where things got really interesting. Brian claims that he hit the curb before the cops because Gabby grabbed the steering wheel and yanked their van into it. But after watching the police body cam footage several times, their stories do conflict here because Gabby would admit to hitting his shoulder after they saw the police sirens, not yanking the wheel, but punching his shoulder, mostly just to let him know that he was being dumb in how he was driving and letting the argument turn into this. Experts in body language were very concerned after seeing this footage, and they would claim that it's obvious that Gabby is in trouble because of Brian's behavior. Anyways, this was the first conflicting piece of information that we really got to see over her yanking the steering wheel versus punching him. But even the police officers that were dealing with this admitted to their stories not lining up to each other. But they just assumed that Brian was just being a nice guy and didn't want to tell the police officers 
about the physical assault. After all, Brian did have marks all over him from their supposed fight, but people are pointing out that Gabby also had marks on her from their argument. This whole interaction is creepy because Brian is acting so normal and calm, and towards the end he's even joking around, while Gabby is clearly not okay. It just seems really off. The result of this interaction was that Gabby was able to drive the van away, but Brian offered to be the one to stay in the hotel for the night to honor the police officer's request of them staying separate for at least a day. Now, it is important to note here that originally the police officers wanted to put her in the hotel and let him drive the van, but he thought that this would be bad for her, so he switched things around. Once again, wanting to be in control. It is really important to notice how cool and calm Brian seemed to be after the police officers started referencing to him as the victim. All the information that I'm giving in this video is found online. I can't solve the mystery from here, but I can at least give you guys the information to try and put something together out of all of this. Now, with that out of the way, most people would paint the picture the opposite way. Not that Brian was the victim, but Gabby was. Officers assumed Brian was a victim because Gabby admitted to hitting him, and the stories from the witnesses that originally called the police on the potential domestic violence issue, they also claimed that Brian did not hit her. Somewhere along the lines, they were reunited for a little, and just a week later, she released this video to their official YouTube channel called Beginning Our Van Life Journey. One more thing to note before I go any further was this line about how she felt that Brian did not believe she could make it on YouTube. Well, let's look at their channel now. With over 100,000 subscribers as of the recording of this video, and 5 million views on her first video, I would disagree with Brian. She had a promising future on YouTube. After all, it was a trending topic. Van life is huge, but I guess Brian didn't understand. It is believed that she made at least one more video after this, but it now appears to be unlisted. Few people saw this video, but the only evidence of it anymore is the end screen of our first video, where it shows us a video that is no longer available to be seen. There's not enough information out there to fill in all the cracks because, after all, they were trying to get away from the drama of the world and to explore it themselves. From what it seems, they were happy again, but that was just what the social media saw. In reality, it was far, far different. On August 27th, Gabby and Brian got into another explosive argument in public, causing chaos. According to the witness of this, Ciela Angelo, they were having an explosive argument at this restaurant where it appeared that Gabby was very uncomfortable and Brian was allegedly aggressive and angry with servers in the restaurant. This definitely will not be the last time in the story that you'll hear about Brian's anger issues. It appeared that they were almost kicked out, that or they just decided to take the argument somewhere else. Later, on the same day, this family travel channel passed their van in the Grand Tetons. At first, they thought nothing of it and simply drove past. It wasn't until Gabby was reported missing that they thought to go back in their footage and review it. When they went back into the files of their GoPro, this is what they saw. You can see the bumper stickers just slightly and the hat on the dash is really what gives it away. Now if you look at this footage, you can clearly tell that the hat is theirs, and it was indeed their van. This will be later used in the investigation to find Gabby. But back to the sighting of the van. They did not see Gabby or Brian, just the van, but this would be normal because they usually seem to sleep in a tent nearby. That or they went on a hike in this beautiful area. Somewhere along the lines, Brian was in the area by himself, hitchhiking. Back to the van's last location. Now what he was doing throughout this entire time is unknown, but it may have something to do with what happened to Gabby. This lady gave him a ride and said everything just seemed normal. They were just chit-chatting until things got close to the drop-off, where he seemed to get angsty. She was trying to figure out where to drop him off exactly, but he wanted to be dropped off miles away from his van for some unknown reason. He quickly got mad and, while the van was still moving, jumped out and ran away. It was very odd because he seemed so normal until this point, and something triggered him. Maybe the fear of him getting caught. Then this happened. September 1st, Brian Longy returns home without Gabby and says nothing in regards of her, or at least to the media. 
He met with his parents, and nobody in the Laundry family is speaking on Gabby. They're silent on the matter. Now, let's go back to the Tetons for a second. That is on the other side of America. If you look up the general time it would take to drive the distance he drove back home, it would be about a 40 hour journey. So he had to have left the Tetons close to when the van was last spotted. So whatever happened to Gabby must have happened near the 27th of August. That or on the day their van was spotted. Ten days later, Gabby Petito is officially announced missing. With the Laundry family not helping the FBI much at all for the search, things seemed hopeless. But that was when the footage from earlier comes into play. Around the time that she was reported missing was when the YouTuber family turned their footage in as evidence. So with this information, they were able to do a search in the area where they last spotted the van. Upon searching this area, they found buried human remains. A tragedy for the Petito family. With further DNA testing, it was confirmed that Gabby was indeed dead. Since she was buried, it is evidence that someone must have done this to her. Maybe someone who fled the scene and would conveniently go missing just days before the finding of the body. To be exact, she was found on September 19th, and just before that, on September 17th, Brian was officially considered missing as well. Let's rewind a little bit. Before Brian was considered missing, it was reported that neighbors of the Laundry family saw Brian and his family on a walk around their neighborhood. They did not see Gabby, but they thought it seemed normal for them, so nothing was said. They must have not seemed concerned at all, they were just acting like nothing happened to Gabby just ignoring it. It wasn't until later that Brian went on a hike at the Carleton Reserve, or at least that was what it was made to look like. He drove out to the reserve that was flooded, alligator infested, and I'm sure full of bugs, just a hike after his fiance was found dead. It just doesn't seem right. Later, after he never came back from his hike, his family reported him missing and found his car at the Carleton Reserve along with a note that, as of right now, has not been released to the public. What it said we may never know, but at this point, Brian finally had a warrant out for his arrest. But it isn't for what you'd think. It was for bank fraud. He allegedly stole money from Gabby's account. Maybe this was to help him have the funds to be on the run, or maybe it was to pay the drivers while he was hitchhiking. Then this happened. Somebody caught this image on their trail camera. It appears to be Brian, and some people have cross-referenced this backpack with a backpack in his earlier video. Now, think what you want. It's really hard to tell who this really is, but it sure looks pretty close. This professional manhunter has reason to believe, though, that this picture is not actually a Brian. It's just coincidence. For the next few days, internet sleuths were scouring the internet for clues, like never before. TikTok was flooded with videos of people uncovering information that potentially could help find Brian so that we could get answers on what happened to Gabby. These are some of the things that the internet sleuths found. First, they noticed that a Spotify playlist that they promoted in the past had some updates. He changed the title from self-consumption to just blank, nothing. And he got rid of a few songs, including one with an art cover of Gabby supposedly on it. After this, his Instagram went live, just for a few seconds, but this is what we saw. Water, and what appears to be a boat. His Facebook is an entire story. Here's the video he posted recently of him just walking through a dark trail, which could actually be located in the Carleton Reserve. But this post is really what confused people. Finally, heading out, all will be explained one day. I need some time. To my parents, I love you. Now, it doesn't seem to make sense for Brian to post these all over social media, knowing that the world is watching him, and everything he'll post will be eventually used as evidence against him. But it is very possible that he was hacked, and that these people are posting these things to confuse us, or just to start drama. So once again, it's your choice to believe if this was actually him, or someone else. As of right now, people are searching for Brian at Fort DeSoto because his parents were actually seen checking in there, probably to get away from the media that has been storming their house. But from what we know, there was no sign of Brian there. No sign of Brian anywhere. If you go on YouTube, their channel is called Nomadic Static. 
You'll see links to all their social media. Feel free to check it out and see if you can find anything to help out, but possibly the saddest thing I have seen was the link to Gabby's website, to her blog that she tried so hard to create, despite Brian being so unsupportive for this passion of hers. If you check it out, the website is locked like it wasn't complete yet. Possibly one of the last things that Gabby will leave with this world. And it was incomplete. I hope to see someone finish this for her someday. And it is great to see the overwhelming support for her YouTube channel. With nearly 200,000 subscribers, people are coming together to make her dreams come true. Even if she didn't get to see them happen. Truly a heartbreaking story. One thing I will note, we have no idea who has control of the YouTube channel. Most likely, Gabby kept it to herself because Brian was pretty unsupportive of it behind the scenes, so he probably wanted nothing to do with it. But I guess we'll see. It's really the only platform that Brian hasn't supposedly posted on since his disappearance, so wouldn't be surprised if we see that next. Someone was lucky enough to interview Gabby's best friend, where we did learn some new information on the toxic relationship she seemed to be in. Her friend said that Gabby would come over up to 10 times a year just to take a break from Brian. This is just further evidence that there are issues in their relationship behind the scenes. She also mentioned that Brian seemed to have control issues and really struggled with jealousy. According to this lady, who just so happens to be an expert in body language and domestic violence cases, seems to be a red flag. So you may be wondering what happened to Gabby, and well, we don't for sure know yet, but we do have these details that we can kind of put together as a solid guess. Her death was ruled to be a homicide, and there are pictures of the actual crime scene that appears to show bullet holes in a few logs, implying that she was hit by one of these bullets. There are also pictures of Brian's room circulating the internet, and they found this, a gun allegedly the same exact caliber that was found at the crime scene. Now, could this all just be a coincidence? Well, maybe. But there seems to be just too many things pointing to Brian. As of right now, this is a heartbreaking story, tearing through the van life scene, and I'm sure scaring some people away from the beautiful way of life. This van meant a lot to Gabby. It all started in New York, then went through Colorado, Wyoming, and finally back to its resting place in Laundry's driveway without her. Being searched for evidence as of right now, this is not how things are supposed to end at all. This is her YouTube channel, and I encourage you guys to go ahead and subscribe to it to help make Gabby's dream come true so that we could prove to Brian that she did have what it took.